I read an article where you shared that there was a member of the public who actually came up to you to say like, hey, Melinda, when you come on the TV, I turn, I turn a different channel. Yes. I'm like, how on earth do you deal with that? Because I mean, like if somebody told me that, I might cry immediately. Yeah. I mean, yeah, how do you... I cried you... on the inside. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> because I bet. she wanted to take a picture right after telling me that I was awful. <laughs> what? <laughs> Welcome guys to another episode of the Are You OK podcast and I'm so excited that she's here. Award-winning TV host, TV actress and honestly, every time I see her, I just have like amazing moments and we always cry a little bit. <laughs> it's Belinda Lee! <laughs> I didn't want to remind you that, you know. <laughs> right? I don't know why. It's like yeah. every time we meet or we have an interview on my radio show, I always end up like... Tearing. Tearing. So that's why I wonder if this packet of tissue is for you or for me. <laughs> Do you know you're the first guest I brought a tissue like really? packet like, to leave it there? For yourself? <laughs> I don't know. I, thought, us, like, for I think us. it's going to be for us I think though. it's going to happen. I think it's there's going to be some tears. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Good, I, happy tears, good sad happy tears. tears, sad tears. They're all part and parcel of life, you know, yeah. and it's very healing as well. So sometimes yeah. I always encourage people, it's okay. It's okay to tear. It's okay to cry. Yeah. It's okay to grieve. Yes. Don't ever stop yourself from feeling all those intense feelings because yeah. it's important to feel them. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, on my way when I was driving to yeah. this location, I was uh, thinking about, uh, our relationship, you know, and our mm -hmm. friendship. Mm -hmm. And I remember I just went back to weirdly like um, when my mother passed away, you gave me a call and you, I see the thing is, I don't even remember what is it you said, but I remember, you know, people always say that like, you don't really remember what people do or mm -hmm. say, but you remember how they make you feel. Yes. Yes. And all I remember thinking about that is like, you really comforted me. It was a short conversation. It was like 10 minutes maybe, but it was full of comfort and and I felt so loved. I mean, we're not super close, but mm. the words that came through on the phone, Belle, I never forgot the way you made me feel for that. So thank you so much for being this lovely light and joy. It's what I love about your show. It's called Are You Okay? Yeah. You know, I think at the end of the day, what is most important is just to ask the people around you, how are you and are you okay? Yeah, And exactly. you'll be surprised by all the answers that you get. <laughs> yeah. Most of the time is, I'm okay, but actually you're not very okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah. you're in the hot seat today. I want to yeah. ask how you are, what's been happening, and, and are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I am very, very okay. Wonderful. Very okay. I'm, okay. I would say I'm not just very okay, but I'm very well. Yeah. I feel very well on the inside out. Yeah. And I think it really shows mm -hmm. from the from my demeanor, from my energy. And I think yeah. that's so important because I haven't been okay for a long time. Right. I wasn't okay for decades. Right. And to finally come to a space, to a place where I can say, Jean, I'm really okay. It's it feels awesome. great. <laughs> I love it. I can tell. I mean, you're glowing. You came in looking like such a superstar. <laughs> All you. this great energy coming out of you. Um, Thank you. So I want to hear about um, these dark days that you've mm, had. Going back, Yeah, right? going back a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, what was triggering those dark times for you um, where you had like depression and panic attacks and right. things like that and how you dealt with it? What, what, what was that period like? I think uh, when we talk about period, I, I wouldn't refer it to just a season. Yeah. Uh, like you mentioned, it was actually for a long, long time. I guess it all started because the moment my mom found out that she had me, my family did not have the means to keep one more child, you know, to bring up one more child. And that was me. I was a right. third child. Okay. So at that time, my mom had to give up, you know, she had to give me up. So, um, so the moment I was born, I was being given away. I was given away to a relative. Right. And to be very frank with you, that um, shaped mm. my mind and my heart into an orphan's heart. Right. I grew up feeling very rejected, very abandoned, and yeah, feeling like 
I was a reject in life because right. I never felt that I was wanted by anybody. Not because my family made me feel this way, but I guess it's because I was always moving from house to house, you know, homes right. to homes, and I never, I never had a sense of belonging. Right. You know, who loved me, and who was my, you know, who really valued me. Yeah. So I grew up with very low self-esteem, and I always joke about this. Gene, people grow up with low self-esteem. I would say I grew up with no self-esteem. Wow. And that was even worse. It's hot. So I always grow, you know, always feeling inadequate, inferior. It wasn't the most pleasant feeling in life. Right. And unfortunately, um, it kind of manifested. Yeah. I mean, you know, whatever happens to you in your childhood will lead you into stuff in, in adulthood, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, getting into the wrong relationships, yes. you know, and, yeah. uh, and having friends and, you know, teachers who are constantly telling you that you're not good enough, telling me that I wasn't good enough, I wasn't talented enough. It was trying. Yeah. And to, you know, coming from an Asian family, right? You know, a Chinese family where, you know, they don't tell you, yeah. you know, they don't tell me oh, how much they loved me when I was much younger. It was always tough love, you mm, know? You yeah. gotta be strong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. So I guess um, there was a lot of, um, that was a huge void in my heart, constantly looking for acceptance, constantly looking for love and it was a very dangerous time yeah. because I would hold on to anybody or anything that made me feel valued and wanted even and so, though they were bad for you and you didn't even know it right exactly yeah, exactly. exactly and then with me um for me I always tell my friends you know with every filled relationship I almost felt like a part of me was being stripped away you know yeah. with the various different relationships at the end of the day when I look at myself I realize there was nothing left <laughs> right. on the inside, yeah. you know, um, and it wasn't healthy. Mm. Whether I was in school, whether I, you know, came into the workforce, relationships with family and boyfriends, yeah. everything was just a vicious cycle. It was just unhealthy all the way, yeah. simply because I never had a healthy self-image. Yeah. I never knew who I was. So that led you to... Obviously, episodes of feeling really down and really um, just dark places, basically. Yeah, yeah dark, over. constantly in a very dark hole, yeah. you know, and helpless. Okay. I think that's why I'm saying this for the very first time, Jean. I wrote a song called Greatness. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and, you know, the lyrics was about how, you know, um, hopeless, helpless, this is what they made me feel. Right. You know, like, oh, no. yeah, useless and helpless. That's what they told me right. that I, that, that, that was who I was yeah. in life. But there was always that little voice that tells me, you are made for greatness. Yeah. It was a song that I wrote to myself during my darkest moment. I'm not a musician. I'm not a singer. That's okay. But... <laughs> the fact that you did is brave and a, and a form of expression. It was a form and expression of yeah. expression. And I wish I could sing. I could sing better, so I could really <laughs> release that song on radio. A one but and I two think... and a one two three. Come on, let's no. do it now. Let's, let's do it I now. Think it can only be you know, um, yeah, sung in the bathroom. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it's a song called Greatness and okay. it's truly to really empower lives to really, really encourage a lot of lost souls out there yeah. to let them know those voices that you hear about how unwanted you feel, you know, yeah. how, you know, how, un how not good enough you are as a person. Yeah. Please walk away from them and remember that there will always be that little voice that speaks into your heart to tell you, Jean. Mm. You are made for greatness. Oh my gosh. Like 2018 when Belinda came to my studio and we we're talking about your book and then she wrote me a, a little line and it says here, you are made for greatness. Yeah. <laughs> I thank you for bringing so much joy and light and encouragement to me because, you know, just like a lot of friend, of your friends and audience out there and listeners out there, yeah, we love listening to you. Thank you. And it, you don't realize it, Ajin. Times that I could feel your energy on radio, I would just leave you a little text yes. like, Sweetheart, are you okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even That's before right. the show came out, like, yes. Sweetheart, are you okay? <laughs> I just want to say hello. Oh, and I just so want nice. you to know that, you know, don't give up on yeah. what you're doing. I want to know how you grieved your mom mm. and what that was like for you. 
I think, um, yeah, when because my mom had cancer, you know, and uh, she was battling with cancer, cancer for about six years. So for that six years, it was a very intense six years, not because of her own journey, okay. but it's because of my own journey. Right. I tell you that six years when she was, you know, receiving her treatments, yeah. it was also a season that I was going through a very rough time because right. I had a major, major breakup. And that breakup caused me to plunge mm. so deep. Um, I was crying. I was bawling my eyes out every single day. And at that time, I wasn't married, but I was staying with my mom. Yeah. So she would always come home to and hear me right. crying in the room. So you can, you can imagine how loud it was. Right. And it wasn't intentional. It was just a grieving process. Yeah. And you know, sometimes when people say sorrow kills, it almost killed me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it almost killed me because my heart was just so tired from crying. Yeah. My heart was just so tired from feeling so broken. Yeah. And I just didn't want to live anymore. Yeah. Oh my mom was going through cancer. She wanted so much to live. And there I was a very, very healthy person, but I so wanted to die. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And during that time when, um, that was one night she came into my room, she heard me crying. She came into my room. I didn't know she came in and then she gently put her hand on my shoulder mm. and she said to me in Hokkien, but I'll do it in English. She yeah. said, Belina, she called me Belina. She said, Belina, please don't cry for this person anymore. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. You have walked through the darkest times with me during my chemotherapy, my darkest times. Now, will you allow me, your mother, to hold your hand and walk through the darkest times of your life with you? Oh my gosh. At that time, I looked up at her Mm. I just saw unconditional love. Mm. And if for the very first time of my life, I felt a very tangible love that came from mom. Because I told you about my upbringing. Yeah. I was always, you know, moving from home to home. Yeah. I never really knew if my family loved me or not, mm. if my mom truly wanted me or not. Yeah. But for her to do that for me and with me, it was very powerful yeah yeah the power of a oh mother's gosh. love and um that lifted me up mm. not instantaneously it yeah. took time to heal but i knew i wasn't alone mm. i knew that my mother was willing she was willing to journey with me no matter how dark it was yeah. for me well, that's like super powerful belinda I'm, yeah. I'm so happy that you had that moment with your mom I am very grateful yeah. I had that moment and I realized that men would disappoint you. Mm. Men, I, I mean, women and men in mm. general will yeah. disappoint me. But I know because of my faith, my God doesn't disappoint me and my own mom, though there were times that yeah. she disappointed me, I disappointed her even more, you know, but there was a time, there was a moment of reconciliation. Yeah. There was that moment of restoration or, you know, in our relationship, which yeah. I think is so beautiful. Yeah. She, she has passed on, but her legacy lives on. And yeah. that's the reason why I can sit here to share this beautiful story with you. So um, there was a time when you were a full-time artist with Media Corp. Yeah. For about 13 years. That is a, a long, good, solid amount of time not as long as you <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah true but hey it was a very memorable time and i know that there were ups and downs mm. with your career and sometimes the opportunities might not have come your way for certain things that you might have wanted or i read a, a recent um actually not so recent but i read an article where you shared that there was a member of the public who actually came up to you to say like, hey, Melinda, when you come on the TV, I turn a, I turn a different channel. Yes. I'm like, how on earth do you <laughs> deal with that? Because I mean, like if somebody told me that, I might cry immediately. Yeah. I mean, yeah, how do you- I cried you... on the inside. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> because I bet. she wanted to take a picture right after telling me that I was awful. <laughs> what? What? Oh my yeah, gosh. Um, it, I, I, I just, at that time, I just joined the TV station. I came from MTV, yes, right? So yeah. 
uh, and and I was working, I was hosting a lot of these, we call it variety okay. shows, like Zhongyi Jiemu, you know, uh. they're all wacky shows. Yes. Like, like that, what, like the Taiwanese, you know, they love those kind of fun, wacky shows. So I was hosting that, that, that type of show. Yeah, I remember that. And, yeah. And um, it was very popular. Yeah. Back then. And I remember there was uh, an auntie who came up to me when I was having my lunch at some food court, like, you oh know, during gosh. filming. And then I, I, for whatever reason, I was alone. Okay. And uh, the auntie came over and just looked at me and said, Hello, hi, Li Si Yu. They call my Chinese name. I yeah. said, Okay, hello. I thought the usual, Oh, ni hen mei, you know, or Oh, hen si huan yeah. But no, it was a total opposite. It was, Hello, Li Si Yu. And she said, Wo kan dao ni jiu tao yan. That means I want to look at you. I, I I hate you. I don't like you. And she said, you know, uh, yeah. you know, 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 did you understand oh, what I yes, said? Yes, totally, yeah, completely. She said, you know, you're such a turn off. And every time I see you on TV, I will change channels. Wow. Yeah. At that time, I, was, I think I was eating chicken rice or something. I was like, you're minding on your own business, <laughs> doing your own thing, and this happened. I know. And then I was shocked. Yeah, I was course. very taken aback, very broken on the inside. Like I told you, I was already suffering from low self-esteem, right? Yeah. And for somebody to come up to me and tell me in my face that you're such a turn off, you're so irritating, you're like a crazy woman when you laugh on TV, it was a bam, bam, bam. It was just, she was hitting me hard. Yeah. And after the, all the insult, she said, <laughs> And I bet you actually did, right? Yes, you know, I did. Of course, you smiled and you did, did it, right? I did. But my smile was the most oh. awkward smile ever. It was like... I mean, that it was is awful. like... You know, obviously there is like... That's weird. For somebody yeah. to do that, even and yeah. and, uh, and not not nice at all. It's not nice, but you know, Jean, this is part of our. It comes with it. it comes I get with it. it. It comes yeah. with it, and I had to be strong enough to be able to take it to yeah. take that kind of criticism. Though yeah. it wasn't very constructive, to be frank with you. But, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> but it was in my face already, and there yeah. was nobody to protect me. Yeah. So I had to face it alone. Uh, so that was hard. Yeah. I read that you didn't like to do these variety shows. It was really not your, your thing, actually. Yeah, I never wanted to be a host. Right. Wanted to be an actress. Is that right? I wanted to be a dancer. A dancer! I've always wanted to be a contortionist. Can you? Do <laughs> I, I mean used to. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Let's clear the space now and let's have not a anymore. dancing session. <laughs> I wanted to be a dancer. No way! Okay, okay. I think if I really pursued a dance career, highly likely I, I should be a some sort of a professor in you know, some dance academy right now because I really loved dancing and I knew yeah. I had a gift yes. in dancing. But that was a you know, long time ago. So I never wanted to be a host. Between acting and hosting, uh, acting for sure, not yes. hosting. Okay. But I didn't understand why I was always being given a lot of hosting opportunities. I mean, you started out as an MTV host, exactly. isn't it? But you it know, wasn't like, even oh my, my choice. It wasn't me <laughs> who wanted to be an MTV VJ because okay. for somebody with such low self-esteem, it was impossible to dream of becoming an MTV MTV VJ. It was my, you and know, yet my, it landed on you. Yes. So amazingly. And simply, you did so well. Simply because of the hilarious laughter that I had. <laughs> what? That I carried with me all my life. Yeah, it's true because uh, when I, after I won the competition, yeah. the producer had a talk with me and I asked, why did you guys choose me? I just really want to know. They said, first of all, you're a fresh blood. You know, yeah. you're fresh. Nobody has seen you. Mm. We like your energy and we love your laughter. Right. Because when it comes to MTV, anything goes. Yeah. You know, and I love the fact that you're spunky and yes. you're just different. Yeah. You know, so I think it was my, you know, uh, horrendous laughter that kind of helped me to clinch the deal. <laughs> hey, whatever. But I remember, I remember the time when you came onto the scene, we were all like, wow, what a fresh, beautiful face. Oh, thank you. And you like articulated so well. So thank we were you. like, this is like a perfect MTV VJ. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. And then great. I was with them for about four and four and a half years. And then I moved on yeah. to local TV station. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, so it wasn't easy yeah, no. at, at it's all. It's totally different as it, well, it right? Was, it was, uh, there was a culture shock. And also because in MTV, I was asked to speak like 80% Mandarin, 20% English. Yeah. You know, it was always very, you know, lots of Pan-Asians. So yeah. they like that. 
you know, that that mix of English and Mandarin yeah. kind of hosting style. So it was more relaxed. Yeah. And then when I moved into the TV station, the local TV station, it was either English or, or Mandarin. Mandarin. Yeah. You know, you, uh, it was best not to mix it. So yeah. I was already feeling a little out of place, a okay. little awkward. Yeah. And I had to brush up on my Mandarin. Right. You know what I mean? And um, I guess... Um, Sometimes when you work with different people or you're under the supervision of different bosses, you have different types of experiences. Yeah, and for, for sure. For me, I had good days and bad days. I had good and not so good experiences with colleagues yeah. and bosses. You yeah. know, I developed panic disorder. Mm, oh, yeah. Damn. I didn't realize that I had panic disorder, that it actually came. Uh, until I started to drive, you know, mm. because of all the pressure, live shows, all the pressure that just came every single week. It was yeah. a weekly thing. And one fine day, I realized I couldn't drive anymore. I was having blackouts when I was as driving, driving. As I was driving, mm. I felt like somebody was punching me in my gut and my stomach. I had a blackout and, and it was happening every two minutes oh my God. for a few months. I knew it was something was wrong. I didn't yeah. know what was going on. And I decided to see a psychiatrist. Yep. And so I had to do some sort of a test. And I was diagnosed with panic disorder. And Whoa. those were panic attacks. I see. Okay. And because of those attacks, I couldn't do live shows anymore. Oh, I see. Yeah. So you had to stop. At that point, my world shut. Oh, because I'm a host. Yeah, I already didn't like my job to begin with, mm. but I had to carry on because, and I was afraid to tell anybody. That was about ten years ago, ten, eleven years ago. Yeah, because I was afraid that if I tell my company that I was diagnosed with panic disorder, yeah, that I will get panic attacks during live shows. I will be fired. Right. And that was my rice ball. Oh my God. So for many, many years, I carried that burden in my heart. I didn't dare to tell anybody. While still doing live shows, were yeah. you still trying to do it as, yeah. oh my God. I remember there was a moment, nobody knew I had those attacks. I was doing a live pre-recorded show, but filled with lots of people, audience and all that. I had a blackout again and again and again. I didn't know what was going on. And you know what? Singapore audience, they are the best. They cheered me on. They applaud and cheered me on. Yeah. To just to tell, you know, trying to tell me, Belinda, you can do it. You can yeah. do it. And I managed to finish what I needed to do. But I went home feeling completely useless. I felt like I completely ruined the show. But I could tell nobody that I was having panic attacks. So nobody knew. As you for many many years, my gosh. to be very frank with you, Jean, this is the very first time I'm sharing this on national TV. Oh my gosh! I've never I've never talked to anyone about this. Yeah, I've not heard about this ever. Um, not even with cameras facing around me like this. Yeah, I couldn't even do it. Wow! I could not even do it. It was hard. I know this is deep and this is kind of intense, but. Yeah, that was my life for a long, long time. So Belinda, um, we always get the guests to write either a message oh. of like um, strength or your favorite quote or whatever. We might be gifting it to like your biggest fan or something. It's very simple, nothing fancy. Like what I always... Yeah. You know, tell people around me. I also, it's a reminder to myself that you are made for greatness. Remember, you are, you're not an accident. You are made for greatness. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Belinda, thank yeah. you so much for sharing no, today. You. Oh my goodness. Um, we had a wonderful, wonderful sharing session. And now we're going to have a little take a break.
session. Yes. <laughs> Are you ready to build a fort with me? Ooh, <laughs> we're really? gonna like, we're gonna okay. get two chairs. Um, yeah. I don't know how we're gonna do this. We're gonna build a fort. We have blankets, we have cushions, we have toys. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna get in our little fort and like a little safe space. Safe and space, okay. Tell each other what we are most grateful for right now in our lives. Ah, Should we do it? Can. Let's do can. it. So we need to clear the set, so let's okay. do it. So here we are at our uh, at our little fort slash tent, and Belinda is so good at building a fort. Oh my goodness, you knew like okay, we'll put the stools here, we'll put this over, we'll put the caps there, cushions here to elevate it. It's nice, right? I love it. I, can we do the interview all over again? <laughs> you want to do it here? <laughs> We're doing it here. We should have done it inside here. I, I love it. I love it. It's I think it's so thing. intimate, and then with animals in the tent with us, this is intimate. I love, love, love. Thank you so yeah. much for you know building this fort with me. We haven't done this with any guest at all. Mm -hmm. um, we've often done other things like seated down, but not quite, not quite this. This is you nice. Know? Yeah. This is um, a big thanks to the guys at Bedroom Affairs for you know helping us uh, get this going mm -hmm. over at my village at uh, at Serangoon Garden. Uh, so these are yeah all the cute little toys we picked out and mm -hmm. the cushions and everything. Um, I thought that you know forts are like tents are like little safe spaces. You know when kids like when they play, they're True. always like, in here and then they like play with their dolls or wh whatever. Oh yeah. You know. So I thought we could share um, the things that we are grateful for like right now, right at this moment. Do you mm -hmm. want to start or should I start? Uh, why don't you start? I can start. Mm. I mean, like, right at this moment, I'm just so thankful that Belinda is here as a guest and that she is happy and healthy and in such a great space um, and looking absolutely glowing and lovely and has always been just such a pillar of light and strength mm. um, every time I see her. Um, and she is just super comforting to me. Just your presence is always very comforting. So I'm very grateful for Belinda. <laughs> I really am. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. <laughs> I, you know, I wanted to say something very similar. I am yep. so grateful that I am here with you. Oh my God. You know, building this fort is very special to me. <laughs> I think we have always, um, you know, met each other, but we have never been this close. Yeah. So it's the first time that I can really, I can literally feel your energy, <laughs> which is great, which is something that I'm so grateful for. Yeah. And Jean, I just, um, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for this interview. For me, I don't even look at this as an interview. I look at this as a heart to heart talk with you. Yeah. And, but you know, it's just with cameras. Yeah, just so happens the cameras are there. And I want to thank you for giving me a safe space to be able to share my heart. Absolutely. It, wasn't easy yeah yeah but because there were many firsts <laughs> yes yes in this interview but i want to say i'm very grateful to be to be given a safe space to share my heart simply because i trust this girl <laughs> thank you i trust you a lot thank you so much so thank you very much for giving me that opportunity to share my story <laughs> and uh you know i think you've, you're going to help a lot of people who are watching this or listening to this and finding themselves in situations maybe even similar to yours mm. or, or even not just in different spaces here and there um and trying to get out of these um negative dark uh points so, yeah, um, yeah there are many people who feel that they're not good enough or they're being told that they're never good enough yeah you know and i hope that we're here to give them a different voice a different perspective yeah that all these not good enough comments and remarks they shouldn't shape you and your future yeah you know absolutely. and in fact um you should try to you should try to really rise above those noises mm. and be a better version of yourself yeah that's why i always tell people you know you can you are stronger than you think you are <laughs> yes you are yes you are yeah, so please don't give up so easily thank you yeah. belinda for being here today uh, for sharing your heart with us with me and just for being open and lovely as always and um yeah thank you guys for watching yeah big thanks to my village at Serangoon Garden for supporting this podcast as well um I feel healed by today's episode thank you thanks I feel inspired by Bye. you always thank you thank you thank you big hug to you a big proper hug. hug big hug a proper oh hug. my gosh <laughs> post pandemic hug yes love you oh, love you too <laughs> 
Thanks, Melinda. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you. Go build a fort. I love you. <laughs> Sarahe. Oh, wait, wait, let me do this. Sarahe. When I realized I won, the first thing that was in my head, and I think I've spoken about this before, but like the first thing that was in my head was like, holy crap, I got to go to national service. Okay. And that was just a time where I'm just like, I don't even know what's in my mind. I was just jumping from one thing to the other. Yeah.